Welcome to Brussels, Belgium. The inventors of fries, amazing beer, and of course, chocolate. So stick around because we're gonna be exploring its amazing culture and delicious food. All right, so to start our day here in Brussels, uh, we're gonna make our way into the center. I think that's a good starting point. And we're gonna get on the tram. We come out of the tram and we see this uh, small art exhibit behind us and we found out that this is part of a yearly assembly here in Brussels that is meant to host uh, and protect artists, journalists that come from places that are not safe because of the art they make. And we've been looking at this for like about 10 minutes now. And each image is so powerful and they're from so many different parts of the world. It's awesome exhibiting this and uh, I wish we were here for the actual assembly because they would have a lot more art like this. Which brings me to another point. I did not know this until this morning. So apparently Belgium is huge with cartoons. It's basically the birthplace of cartoons in like Europe. I didn't realize a lot of comic books I was reading as a kid in Greece come from Belgium. So like Lucky Lou, Tintin, and some others that I can't think of right now. All right, let's move on to our next place. After all our travels for this long, we are officially in the capital of Europe and the EU. And I just have to say that like, it, it does feel, I don't know if it's because I already know that it is the capital of the EU, but it feels like it. You know, there's like that blend and even just like seeing so many different people and cultures and languages, it's really interesting. But another fun fact is the only country in the world that has seven different parliaments. So you have federal government, you have three different linguistic parliaments, and then you have three regional parliaments. So that just shows the diversity of the country. And so within those three different linguistic communities, you have French, you have Flemish, which is the Dutch part, and then there's a small little part of a German region as well. But the southern regions are pretty much French speaking. And here, I actually, knowing that before, I thought that there would be just French everywhere. French is the dominating language here. You do see on a lot of signs and even like magazines, you have a Dutch version, so the Flemish version, and then you have French. So if you go in shops, though, pretty much going to be French speaking people. And just like that, we ended up from wearing sunglasses to seeking shelter from the rain. Pattern for this trip? Yeah, we've gotten so rained on. We were not expecting that. Actually, Belgium has how many days out of the year? I forget how many days, but it was it's more than Amsterdam. It's actually really high up. I think with over 200 days of rain each year, because Amsterdam was around 190. Yeah. So now we're gonna see if we can wait the rain out. We made a little friend. It was literally by Olivia's feet, and I thought it was a leaf. Looking for the mouse? You just don't want to part with your friend, do you? No. All right. Um, we seem to be pretty unlucky with the rain. But if it rains 200 days of the year, it kind of makes catch sense. It. Yeah. <laughs> So we've just accepted we're gonna get soaked. Now we're on the hunt to find the symbol of Brussels. Rumors have it that it's almost as visited as the Statue of Liberty in New York. That's crazy. That's how like big it is here for the culture and just as an attraction. Have a guess what it is. We 
escape from the rain into this huge arcade where we're not expecting this. It just goes on and on, so we'll see for how long it goes. But there's a bunch of chocolate stores in here, including Godiva next door, but we're not gonna try that because that's plenty in America. We're gonna go with the one next to it. And it seems to be around since the same time. So we got three different pieces of chocolate and it costs 302, so about one euro per chocolate, which I think it's a decent price for like, for good quality chocolate. So I got the Janduya. Janduya is one of my favorite flavors. So let's see how it is. Mm. How is it in comparison to Banky? Oh, that's a good question because Janduya is Italian. It's hard because I would need to have it like right next to each other at the same time. But um, I, I'd say it's about the same or maybe Venki is a tiny bit better. I got the chocolate mousse. I carefully scoped out every single one. And I'm surprised I went with this one, but we'll see. And it's covered with white chocolate. Mm. And... Well, that's really nice. I prefer this one. I really love France and we have been trying to go for about a year but like it just hasn't happened yeah. with like planning, scheduling, flights and being here is kind of like I'm being teased. Yeah. Like the French and like, like a lot of the a shops very big too. French feel to it. So. Yeah. It's it's very nice. More chocolate shops. Well I like the style of this one. Truffles. I like truffles the most. We need this. Instead of Diagon Alley and Harry Potter, I think this may be Chocolate Alley in Belgium. <laughs> That's good. That's it's just good. chocolate shop after chocolate shop. I know. So many options. So we may not have gone into the best one. And some of them seem like they're all different styles. Some are like more oldie world, old fashioned. Some yeah. are more like hot couture chocolates. Now we're in the cafe uh, <laughs> area. We just found out that this arcade we're in right now was built in 1847. Wow. wow, it's very beautiful architecture. Highly recommend this and you shelter yourself from the rain because chances are when you're here, if it's not the summer, you're definitely gonna get rained on. I wasn't kidding when I said it's almost as visited as the Statue of Liberty. there to see this like tiny statue that's this big and it's also like a theme that goes on with it so mannequin uh, dresses according to the weather his mood so each time you can come by it'll have something different so if you come and see it it probably won't have the same outfit he had on just now they also tried to be a little more inclusive so in the most recent years uh, for inclusivity they erected a girl statue peeing we're gonna try to locate that one as well to the girl statue and we couldn't share too much about the history earlier because it was literally pouring buckets of rain on us so mannequin piss in Dutch means a little boy who's peeing and actually the first mention of its existence stems back in the 1400s but the first depiction we have is from the 1600s and apparently back then it was used as a water fountain to supply the city with water, with drinking water. The original version is back from the 1600s but the boy that we saw now is actually from 1960s because uh, throughout the centuries it's been stolen, it's been vandalized so they had to make new ones and the girl statue over here is actually from 1985. Cute attraction, you wouldn't expect so much fuss about. It's literally packed with people taking pictures. Uh, it's actually quite a funny sight. We're part of it too. Now we're gonna jump into the beer culture a little more. So what you see behind me is an alley dedicated to delirium. So if you know a little bit about Belgian beers, you may have heard of delirium. It makes excellent beers and this whole alley is dedicated to that. So we're gonna go try some excellent beers.
Sparks and Delirium. And uh, now we're on to the next place. We're gonna get a very traditional dish here in Belgium. Olivia's gonna tell you a little more about it. I'm just very happy. So I recently discovered my love for beer. I hated beer up until like three years ago maybe. But Duel has been my favorite this past year. And I'm just so happy it just happened to be from Belgium. So it's very cheap to drink Duvel here. So cheers, Olivia, show us what you got. It's quite a lot on there too. We have come to have mussels and fries, which is actually the national dish of Belgium. And I kind of want to start by saying like there's, there's a really long history of the dish in the country, but it really gained popularity during like horror times in the country when people living by the sea couldn't afford fish, so they would catch mussels and eat them to sustain them rather than having to pay for expensive fish. So that became like a household staple. So it started off as more of a household food and dish, and now it's more of, I think you probably go out to eat it more than you would actually have it at home, but I may be wrong. Actually, we are here during mussel season, so they have a thing in Belgium, I guess, where you only eat them if the month has an R in it. So we, March has an R, so we're lucky. April does too, so we're, we're at the end of it. But I'm excited to try it. We got the ones with garlic and cream with the sauce all the way at the bottom. So you kind of have to dip it, so it'll be good with the fries. really good. They're really tender. Like you don't even have to chew through it or anything. So maybe Maria will enjoy it too. The fries are nice. They, they don't, I feel like they just probably make big batches because everyone's getting them here. So they don't taste fresh, but the flavor is nice. They don't actually eat them with a fork here. They kind of take the shell of another one and eat it like that. Do you know what one of my favorite meals is? Mussels and fries. I can tell. I don't know if I've ever had it before. <laughs> I honestly am ready to just like, the wine and cream is so good and I feel like this dish, it's like the perfect combination of like comfort food, the fries and like the sauce and the warmth and like gourmet food. It's like chill, it's actually a nice environment. That was an amazing meal, I could probably have this every day. Now let's go try some more fries, but an actual fry place. style with the cheddar cheese sauce but they look really good I mean so far I think I like to look at the Dutch ones more really yeah I don't like them super thick I'm gonna take this one a really good story time regarding the world famous fr french fries at the end of the day they're not actually french fries I think now France may have their own variation of fries what we know is the deep fried potatoes like this are actually Belgian. Where did that come from, you ask? In World War I, when American soldiers were stationed in Belgium, I think more of the country than was French-speaking to begin with, but where the soldiers were based were was in a French-speaking area, and the soldiers spoke French, and they would have these deep-fried potatoes that they called fries, and supposedly the Americans called them French fries because they were speaking French, so they thought they were in Fran they thought they were French. So actually, they were Belgian. Do you approve of the choice? And so for our final stop, we had to get some Belgian waffles. I had some in the morning for breakfast, so I got a different type. So apparently you have the liege and the Brussels waffles. So in the morning I had the liege and they're quite heavy. So we already eaten quite a bit, so we decided to go with the Brussels because we haven't tried it yet. And so this one is hazelnut, chocolate, and whipped cream. So let's see, it looks really good and really big. 
It's really nice. The dough is very light, so it's easy to eat after having eaten so much food. However, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed by the chocolate. Being in Belgium, I would think the chocolate would be a bit better. It tastes like any like chocolate melt you would have gotten at a cheap place somewhere. Maybe this wasn't the place, but the line is huge, so we always figure follow the line, see what like they must know something we don't know, and it looks like locals go here. Not bad, just high expectations when you're in Belgium. What a day. <laughs> All right, so now we're heading back to our hotel. It actually got really, really chilly. It, uh, so even if you come in the summer, make sure you bring a sweater and maybe some pants too, because I think <laughs> this part of the world, even in the summertime, it can get chilly. Yeah, I think in the summer they have nice summers. No, but I think sometimes they have lower temperatures. Oh. Nice first impressions. I was actually a little bit surprised with the subway, metro, tram. It's actually be just because there's so many European headquarters here and it's considered the capital of Europe. I thought it would be a, a, a little, little, little more well-maintained well or a little newer looking. It felt really old, smelly yeah. and just not as clean. Do you think it's an interesting city though? Yeah, it's a very interesting city. And I think it's the perfect city if you just want to come enjoy good beer, it's have food, cocktail. hang out with friends and just like walk around. Yeah. So tomorrow we are going to Bruges, which is in the Flemish region of Belgium. I'm really excited to explore that uh, part because it seems like it's a lot more like medieval medieval and fairy tale like so that should be a lot of fun as always thank you so much for watching we really appreciate you being here and we'll see you on the next one